Today we're inside of the Orlando store. Right behind me, you guys can see the 4,000 gallon system. The new update is coming any day, guys. The electricity started a few days ago. The sump is arriving any day. Protein skimmers here, power heads, everything's here. However, today's episode is all about Acroporas. Me and Josh, we wanna walk you through everything that there is to know about Acroporas. Just follow me in, let's go into the farm and we're gonna just check out some acros, let's go. <music> You guys got it, it's not an official update, but this is a 150 amp panel box. It started yesterday, I'm actually the day before. Today's day three, they've been doing a lot of work. We're super excited, so we think they're gonna be done in about four or so days. And from there, it's a marathon, guys. I'm telling you, I promise you, this will be ready by the time Rifa Palooza Orlando comes. So hopefully we'll see you here. The store's gonna be super busy. But enough with that talk, let's go check out some agros with Josh and the farm, let's go. All right, so I'm telling everyone we're gonna be talking about Acroporas today. We've been teaching people a little bit of everything. We've been teaching flow, we've been teaching lighting, how to move tanks, a little bit of everything. So today is gonna be all about Acroporas and I figure what better way to start this, this, this is one of our raceways here. Obviously we got at least 50 of these things back here, but this one, this is specific one, is a perfect tank to talk about it because we have nothing but Acroporas, except for like 1% is Montiporas, it's like two or three little Montiporas. Us. These are acros been lingering with us just from different tanks and they finally landed here and we recently changed the flow and we had in here uh, I want to say six MP40 powerheads running this tank. Yep. And we had three on each side and we had a little issue with some of the detritus so we started playing with it. We changed things around and we're seeing a match uh, better improvement and not just for the detritus but Funny enough, we're starting to see new growth on some of the corals based on the pattern that we changed. Why would you say that happened? There's a lot to be said about the pH in a coral's body. You know, we regulate pH by, by flow and obviously different environmental things. But flow has a huge impact on how, how a coral digests, believe it or not. Even how their food gets delivered to them. Yeah, for sure. Well, how they can mm -hmm. clean themselves out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. pH plays a huge role inside of the body of the coral because that's how they, one, break down those those foods that they're consuming. Two, it changes the actual metabolic rate of the coral. And then three, that's how they bond calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and all those other traits to produce this coral skeleton. Gotcha. When you first get into the hobby, a lot of people never understand why people are into the psychopores. They don't move, they use less sticks, but for some, reason or another, everyone ends up in this acropora addiction once it's like you graduate almost from school. Yeah, I definitely think that it's like a stature thing. You know, if you've done acros, you quote unquote made it. You know what, I think I agree with what you're saying, but I feel like almost acropora's are not as difficult as people, people make them sound. I, I can name a few of the cores that are more finicky, that yeah, when they're growing, they can be weird, easy to maintain, but to get them to take off, they can be a lot tougher. Example could be Goniopura, some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, example could be uh, Wilson Eyes. Even some mushrooms, believe it or not. Even some mushrooms yeah. can be finicky to take off in the very beginning, you know? What tells you Nacopura is doing very well? First thing is always gonna be polyp extension, not okay. color. Color is usually the last thing to take form. If you guys can see right here, this square right here, that was the original piece. There was no branches here. I can promise you guys, because this coral grows very fast. This is the Paleta Pink Tip Stag. We put the chunk in there. The coral, look how much ground it covered. You guys can see it right here, right, Josh? Mm -hmm. And then now it starts sending branches. So what's the sign of health here? To me, that leading edge right there with the bright yellow on it is super healthy. And now, let me show you guys the next step, because that coral, we have a few colonies growing. This is what it looks like. So that is step, let's say step three, right? Step one is putting the frag, step two, the core start growing. Step three, lay down the foundations, growing new tips. And now you have a colony. You guys can see right here on the side, you can see the shape of the round plugs and everything in there. The core is actually growing underneath. You can see the name on the tile. You can see the tile under, Paleta Pink Tip. So we label our cores, we do lineage. But you guys can see right here, the two examples. And I can show you guys even a step almost before, right here, same coral, guys. So you guys can see the tile down there. I trimmed the coral, and now we put them to grow. So now the next step is put them into a tile once it gets too big, and then it will start encrusting. 
and that's how we get an encrusting piece to get to grow. Something like something like this, when it's laying out all that skin to lay down its foundation, it's like a defense mechanism. It's saying, all right, I got to make my home here, and what is it, what is it going to take for me to feel comfortable? Yes. Because eventually these things get huge, and they they cause a lot of friction in the water, right? So yes. they got to be able to hold themselves down nice and tight. Yeah. That defense mechanism takes energy from the coral, so there's a good chance that when you purchase a coral and it starts to encrust on the rock, you're not gonna get a branch for very, you know, straight away. Yeah. It could take a good amount of time, depending on the type of coral. This coral grows a massive crown, but either way, this thing will encrust for a long time before a sample, it makes Josh. a big top on it. There you go. Yep. Here's a full tile with the same exact coral. In order to go from this to this, your tank is gonna undergo a lot of changes. There's gonna be a lot of calcium and alkalinity and magnesium uptake. Consumption, right, yeah. Yep, but also by the time it gets to that size, you need a lot more flow. Yeah. So over time, a coral like this doesn't need nearly as much flow as something like that because it's creating so much resistance in your tank. That happens even with the smallest of corals. But yeah. then when they get big like this, it's dramatic. If you're going to plan to have Acropora, you need to have equipment that's going to support the ability to go high flow, the ability to go high light, and then understanding how much food your tank can support. How about stability, parameters, chemistry, water parameters? So in the past, we talk a lot about water parameter, and I kind of think that that's, it's almost a dead subject to me, because as long as you keep an elk in between seven and 11, as long as you keep a calcium between 350 and 500, magnesium between 1250 and 1500, nitrates below 25, phosphates below 0 0.10. In that window, pick a number and stick with it. I don't care what you do. Chances are, if you're able to manipulate your tank so that it can keep a consistent alk, calcium, magnesium, nitrate, phosphate, and salinity, then corals are gonna stay alive. I think one really good tip that I could pass <laughs> along to everybody, I think might make a world of difference. If you wanna chase a number, chase the variance. Okay, so set a margin of error for yourself. Say, I don't ever want my alkalinity to be more than 1.0 different from the last time that I tested it. And then over time, you're gonna get good at that, right? Because if you figure out one parameter, guess what? Chances are you're probably going to be able to do it again and again and again and again. Yes. Now move on to the next one. Most important, phosphate levels. How do I keep it under 0 0.10? Who cares if it's 0 0.03? Who cares if it's 0 0.08? Stick for that window. Say, okay, I'm going to commit to having a 0 0.05 difference every time or less. Yes. Now you're winning, because guess what? You're not focused on the coral, you're focused on your success. And over time, it's just gonna happen. Next thing you know, you're gonna have a coral that goes, holy crap, I'm happy, and you're gonna be super thankful that you did that. We have found out, do not try this at home without being an expert. The higher your alkalinity, the faster the corals will grow. The it's higher a, it's the a, pH. It's a higher density of material in the water. Yes, but at the same time, we find out when you grow corals in alkalinity of 10 and above, the corals are fragile. Mm -hmm. They're not as strong, right? They don't do as good. You notice that? Yeah, and for our methods here, it doesn't work because we have to ship these corals. Chart your findings. Make yourself a log because every time you, you test your water, if you make a log, you can go back to the previous iteration of something. You can, you can say, well, I think things are doing better back here. It's true, well, I'm going to refer those with a log together. And you know what, as stupid as it sounds, all the people that have the Trident, I think the reason why they like them so much is it's, it's be, got a log. Is giving you a current, up-to-date reading on your tank's parameters that you care about. You know, if you go and you test your water weekly, you have that much up on somebody who doesn't. Yeah. Now, if you have something that's testing your water four times a day and all you got to do is open up your phone and say, oh, wow, I didn't expect that. I'm gonna go test manually. Yeah. That's a big tool. So Josh, I think that covers everything for aquaporas. If there's something that you guys don't see, 
post it on the comments below. We'd love to answer your questions, guys. Don't be shy, ask any questions. We'd love to help the community. We'd love to see this hobby grow, you know? Anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world, we're gonna be traveling here soon. Uh, we're getting ready to go to Georgia in the next two weeks. We're gonna be there on the first week of February. So please, if you have a tank in the Atlanta area and you want us to come and film it, please just send us an email. We're gonna post the information below. Thank you for giving us all the info, dude. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, but before I give an outro to you guys, I'm gonna leave you guys with some eye candy. We got the 1500s looking phenomenal. We got the 900 gallon tank looking phenomenal. We're gonna gather some eye candy so you guys can see what this looks like. The smaller pieces, how they look big, how they look in a display tank. So go ahead and enjoy it, guys. enjoy all the eye candy i sure did don't forget to subscribe to our channel give us a like post some comments below we'll see you guys on the next episode